What's up you guys, Daniel here with another makeup tutorial. Today's generation is ruled by being politically correct. You always have to say the right things or you're going to offend somebody. So I thought that I would bring this makeup look to life and make everything politically correct. And to get started, we're gonna wipe all this off and start with step one, the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> First thing we gotta do is put our minds into a political mindset. So our step one is going to be a primer. Now our primer is going to represent the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence was signed obviously on the 4th of July, 1776. This document was to separate the 13 original colonies from the King of England and make us an independent union. So the Declaration basically primed our country for what it is today with the full 50 states and our democracy as a government. After the Declaration of Independence was signed, we are finally a free independent union from Great Britain, but we don't really have a government quite yet. So we needed something to act as our foundation. <laughs> that foundation is known as the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution is basically our government. It's the supreme law of our land. The Constitution of the United States really was the first of its kind where it separated our government into three separate branches. And the first three words of the Constitution, we the people, really is an example of what type of government was sought after for our country, which is a government that works for the people and is ran by the people. All right, looks like our constitution is set on our face as foundation. Like I said, our government is separated into three branches of government. Those three branches of government really have to work together to keep our government in line. So our eyebrows are going to act as the branches of government. They kind of look like branches, if you ask me. This first branch of government right here is called the legislative branch. The legislative branch consists of the House of Representatives and the Senate. Their responsibility is to create laws. So anytime you want a law changed or created in our government, you have to contact the legislative branch to get anything done. The other branch of government that we're going to put on this eyebrow is the judicial branch. Now the judicial branch is responsible for interpreting the laws that the legislative branch creates. They're the ones that get to say if it is constitutional or unconstitutional, and it always has to go through the judicial branch before it actually becomes supreme law. So where's our third branch of government? We are the third branch of government. This is the executive branch. The branches of government have to work together to balance each other out to make things work. In makeup terms, if you've got one eyebrow that looks so wonky and the other one is really on fleek, that's only going to reflect badly on you because people are going to be looking at your face and saying, what's going on? So what exactly does the executive branch do? Once laws are created by the legislative branch, then they are interpreted by the judicial branch. And once the judicial branch considers them constitutional, then they must be approved by the executive branch. And after they are approved, then they are finally official laws. Okay, so we've got our Declaration of Independence as our primer. We've got our government set up as our foundation, which is the Constitution. We have our branches of government here. So since around 1776, America has made a few mistakes, you know, just a few. So we are going to use our concealer to kind of conceal those mistakes that America has made. Now, what mistakes could I be talking about? Well, we've got, I don't know, Watergate. Well, I'm not a crook. I've earned everything I've got. We've got slavery. That was a big mistake. So one of our presidents, Mr. Andrew Jackson, you'll know him from the $20 bill. He signed into law the American Indian Removal Act in 1830. This law stated that any Indian tribe east of the Mississippi River must be removed and sent west of the Mississippi River for relocation. Now at first it was a voluntary thing, but once the government got more involved and Americans needed more land, then it became a requirement. So we just gotta start concealing that, pretend it never happened. So this is for the Cherokee. 
This is for the Chickasaw tribe. And this is for the Creek and Seminole tribes. And hopefully after this is all blended out, we will look innocent as possible. Okay, so let's do our checklist. We are a free nation. We've got a Declaration of Independence. We have our foundation of government, the Constitution. We have our three branches of government, the legislative, executive, and judicial branches. And we've done a bit of spring cleaning, concealing, swept everything under the rug. We are looking pretty flawless. Now, a lot of you may be thinking at this point, Daniel, why do you hate America so much? And that is not the case at all. I actually love living in the United States of America. I just feel that it is a personal responsibility for me and other citizens to know where we came from when you realize all of the sacrifices other people had to go through to get us here in this country. That brings me to our next step, the eyes, which are the windows to the soul. And I wanted the eyeshadow to represent things that made me proud to be a United States citizen. Well, I wanted to say the typical things like freedom of speech, freedom of religion, but a lot of countries also have those. We're not the only country with free speech and the only country where we can worship how we want to based on religion. And don't get me wrong, I am definitely grateful to have those things here um, in the United States, but I wanted to find something that was really unique to the United States and what we stand for. So I got to thinking and realized that the United States always helps people when they're in need from other countries. Whether it has to do with natural disasters or wars, or any type of foreign aid, the United States seems to always be there to give some sort of support for the other nations of the world. In fact, the United States actually spends 1% of the entire annual budget on foreign aid. That totals about $41.9 billion a year for foreign aid, which is awesome. That's just 1%. Now, a lot of politicians try to convince you that the United States is spending 25% or more on foreign aid, which is actually not true at all, but because $41.9 billion sounds like a lot of money, which it is. But a lot of these politicians want you to believe that we're spending a lot more on foreign aid than we are, and they want you to vote to cut funding towards other countries in need. In fact, the current president wants to cut 20% of that already 1% that we give to foreign aid and wants to use it to rebuild our military. It is so depleted. We will rebuild our military. He actually said the word rebuild. So let me just put this in perspective for you guys. The United States has a yearly budget, right? 1% of that annual budget goes to feeding third world countries, fighting famine, repairing natural disasters, giving water to people who don't even have clean water, and doing all the things that I love about being a citizen of the United States. Then, we've got 54%, that's more than half of the annual budget, goes towards militarization. So taking away 20% of that already tiny 1% of the annual budget does virtually nothing for us, but it could literally save another human's life who doesn't have food or water in their country. But hey, the president has got half of the country thinking, not my problem, when in reality we should be thinking, what can we do to help? Once we get that mindset, then we can actually start making America great again. Another thing that makes me proud to be an American is our military. Y'all are probably thinking right now, Daniel, what the heck? You just hounded the military for having too much money. I don't think that having a strong military is a bad thing, but I don't want you or anybody else to be fooled that taking something away from people in need isn't going to help rebuild our military when it already has so much funding already. If you didn't know, in addition to the Air Force, Navy, Marines, and the army, the president wants to create a space force to defend space. That's how much money the military has. Space is a warfighting domain, just like the land, air, and sea. We may even have a space force develop another one. Space force. We have the Air Force, we have the Space Force, we have the Army, the Navy. 
Also, there's a giant pipeline going through Native American land, but hey, we have plenty of money to spend on a space force, so why not? So anyway, back to the military. A lot of the things that I take for granted would not be there had it been for the United States military. If it wasn't for our military, we literally would not be a nation. If it wasn't for the military, Germany could have won World War II. And if it wasn't for the military, then Korea could possibly be a complete communist nation. So yes, I'm grateful for our military, and I'm able to be proud of where I'm from because of the military and the things that they've done to help protect this nation. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the eyes to really represent the United States of America, the soul, the things that make me proud to be an American, and once we finish the eyes, then we can get back to the rest of the face. All right, you guys, the eyes are done, so let's do our quick little checklist. We have primed our country for independence. We have set our government down with foundation. We have set up our branches of government. We have concealed our mistakes. We have discussed what makes us proud to be part of the United States of America. And now we have to talk about the people in the United States of America, the ones that really shape our country. So we are going to be contouring our face or shaping our face. And this is going to represent the different diversities that we have in America. Since we are a nation of immigrants, that has created a lot of diversity in our country, which is something to be extremely proud of. Many of the founding fathers of this country had different nationalities. Alexander Hamilton wasn't even born in the United States. So many of the people that shaped and contoured this country were really just looking for freedom from their oppressors, which is a interesting topic. Now we're going to hop on in with the highlights. Highlighters are meant to be blinding. We really want to just we want to make it so bright that it's hard to even see. So the highlighter is going to represent the propaganda and the delusional idea of nationalism versus patriotism because there are, is definitely a difference and I think we have to talk about it. So first, patriotism. Patriotism is the true essence of being proud to be part of a nation. You are proud to be an American. You are proud to be from wherever you're from. The places that you're able to go and the things that you're able to do. That is true patriotism. Now the opposite of that is unfortunately nationalism. Nationalism is the idea that your country is the best country no matter what. It can never do anything wrong. It's the whole USA, USA, USA movement. Woohoo! USA! 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 People that are nationalists are a lot more common than you think. Those are the people that, that have this idea of what the United States should be. Not what it actually is. They're the ones that believe that all of the United States is required to speak English. Down with like Mexicans so that don't learn the language of the Facebook, world. So okay. everybody will get educated oh, how stupid you really are. are. They're the ones that think that the history of the United States is a lot different than what it actually is. They seem to just write their own history. They still have better uh, lives here than they did back in Africa. The slaves, they had better lives here. And there are some that would argue that. You can look that up. Their descendants, the descendants of those slaves, have much better lives here than the descendants of people who would have never gotten on those slave boats in Africa. And that's a provable fact. The confusing part is that patriotism and nationalism really do have some similarities. They're both trying to defend something that is dear to them. Patriotism would lay down their life for the country that they live in. And so would nationalism. But the nationalists' ideas will always be that their plot of land, their, their country is always going to be better than your country. And that's a scary hole to fall into. You can be proud of where you're from, but as soon as you start thinking you're better than anybody in all aspects of life, that's when things start to get really dangerous. Go, 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 go! And that's why this highlighter represents nationalism and patriotism because, yes, it could be blinding, it could be propaganda, but if you catch the light just right, it could be very self-fulfilling. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. All right, that brings us to our last product, and that is the lips. 
And for the lips, I want it to represent some sort of sign-off, something that I can give to you as a citizen of the United States, my perspective of what it's like to be a United States citizen and what, and the things that I strive to stand for. So this whole video can seem like some sort of a farce, and I can only speak for myself. As an American, it's more important about the way that you treat other people, whether they're from your country, whether they're not from your country, whether they are especially from your country but do not look the same as you do, to treat them as an equal. There are things that I obviously cannot change about American history. I can't go back and change the American Indian Removal Act. I can't change the fact that there were Japanese internment camps. I cannot change these things that I regret about my American history. Just as much as other countries can't change their history, whether it be the Holocaust, the Korean War, the Cold War, any of those things, every nation has its things that it regrets, its skeletons in the closet. But the most important thing that we can do is be a nation of acceptance for all people. What I hope you get out of this, to be proud of where you're from and from this moment forward, do the best that you can to write your own history. And before it's too late, do something to change your history. Start doing your own research about politics and things that you stand for. It's so incredibly important to be educated and know both sides. Let me repeat that. It's important to know both sides of the coin before you check that little box that could change history forever. To help you get started in creating your own opinions on subjects regarding politics, all you gotta do is ask this one question. Is this going to hurt or help anybody in a significant way? If you can answer that question in your brain, then it should make everything else easy. The only way to make America great again is to help other people and stop looking out for yourself. If everyone was a selfish citizen that is no longer a democracy, that is an anarchy. We are a nation that helps each other out. So I hope this video can help bring some sort of light to that and start getting active in politics. <laughs> All right, you guys. We gotta do one last thing to make this look complete. This is registering to vote. Our country is all set up. The government has its laws. Everything is in place. Now all you gotta do is register to vote to keep things in line. Thank you guys for watching. If you wanna see anything else from me, you can find me everywhere at Daniel's Rolling on the Floor Laughing, and I hope to see you there.